Hey there, Bobby Blackwolf here. Great person on Twitter uh, that I know has uh, been uh, struggling a little bit with Picross uh, on the Switch, and uh, asked if uh, and, I, and I asked him if it would help if I uh, showcase some like some some of my tips and tricks on how to solve Picross puzzles. This is Picross S for the Switch. He specifically asked for the last puzzle in Picross S, which is this Moth Orchid P150. Uh, I initially completed it in 10 minutes and 36 seconds. I'm obviously not going to uh, complete it that quickly here. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to kind of go over uh, some of the strategies I use to solve these and show that there is uh, actually no guesswork involved. So we're going to go ahead and go in here. And I'm going to see how I do. I have not seen this puzzle in a long time. Uh, so the first thing I always look at is I look at the edges. And I see if there's anything on the edges that I can really use. Uh, that would be useful, and there really isn't. And I'm looking for big numbers. I'm not looking for the ones. Uh, but there's a great one here. There's 12 and 1. So what I'll do in this case, usually in my head, but I'll do it and I'll mark it out here. So I'll actually mark out here where basically I am assuming that there's only one space in between each number. And you notice that there's a little bit of overlap. If I did this from the other side, it would look like this. So that's where it would look like. So I know that because these are cur like are set in the uh, in the same block, so th these are all in the block of twelve. I know right off the bat that those are going to be correct. So I already have that. It's not the edge. It's not where I like to be, but it's close enough. So then what I'll do is I'll go over and now look at the rows. And I noticed that this one, the far right number is a three, which means it is that is going to be there because either the three is going to start on this block here or it's going to start on this block here and go across. I don't know how further it goes. This one's a two, so there's nothing I can do here. But this first one's a one, so I can actually block off both sides. This one's a three. There's a three. This is a two. Nothing I can do, but I can block off both sides on there. There's a three, and I just keep going. This one's a four, so it goes out to the fourth block, and that's a one. So... Now I can look at this edge over here, and what's kind of interesting here is that I know that the 1 can be up here, and then there, it wants a 3, a 2, and a 1. And so what I can infer is I don't know where those two 1s are going to be, but I know that this is the actual this is the 3. This is the only place you can get 3 in a row in this configuration. Also, the 2 is going to be in here, but I don't know if it's going to be that or that, but I know it's going to have that right there. So this actually now I can complete some things. I know that since this row has two, I know that that's off there. These are done. Uh, and that's all I can infer from that. But now on this column, I know that the top one is a one. So I know that's alone. There's a two. I've already got my two right there. Uh, and then I got a one, a one and a three. And I know that the three is going to be right there. So what I can then do here, I'm going to ignore this third from the bottom row for a second. I'm now going to look at the second from the bottom row. The last number is a two, which means this is going to be part of that two. It's either going to be there or there, but it can't be that. Doesn't help us right now in the, in the short run, but that's something to note. This one, this bottom row, it starts with a one and a one. And so I know that this block that I'm highlighted right here is either going to be the, fir the the last one in the row or the second to last one in the row, but it's still a one, so I know that. What this now does is in this second to last column, because I have eliminated one the one block, I now know that the, that is going to be the one. It's going to block off, and then that's going to be the end of that column. So I've now already solved two columns. Uh, I'm going to go back down through, and I'm going to show know that since this is a one, the far right is a one, that's not it. But because I've blocked off this block right here, and then there's a 2, this is going to be a 2, I know it's there. Which now if I look in this last column, the top number is a 1. I know that that's off right there. And then I can finish that out and say that's a 3. So I can, I'm going to continue on this side because uh, now since the far right number here is an 11, I know that can't be it, and I know this starts my 11. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 11. Uh, so that's my first 11 right there. And I know that this is a 2, and so I've already got my 2 right here. I don't know anything more about this last column. I'm not going to worry about it. But 
What I can tell you is I can see here on this that uh, my, the bottom number in this uh, column right here is a seven. It starts here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I know it's a one and a two, and so I've got that up there. Then I'll look across at my rows. There's a one there. This is a one, so I can shut that down. And then I'll look at these. This uh, the, the next one that it wants is a one there. This one's a two, so I know that's there. And I can uh, see that this the right thing is a three, and so I've got that. Uh, and then I can actually finish this column out right now. So this right column is all done. I'm going to continue down this column right here. This is a four right here. And so I know because of the way that this column is, there's a one right there, and that's going to be the second one. The first one can be any of these three. I'm not worried about that. But the last number here is a four. I know it's all four of those. There's a two right there. Uh, and then this, since it's a six, I can go two, three, four, five, six. Cut that off. This bottom one is two, three, four. So I'm now on my way to work on the bottom row, the bottom and the, this side. So now I'm going to look at the columns going back up. And so this one, uh, the great thing about the edges is you know exactly how far things are going to go. So the bottom number here is a six going up to a six. This one's going to up to a five. I can tell now on this row, it wants one, two, and I'm reading from right to left, and then three. So I know that's there especially because in this column, three is right there. Uh, if I look in this column, the last number is a three. We've got it blocked off here. So I know that there's th this is the end of that three, and that is one of our ones that you might ha have wanted to guess on. So I'm going to look at this column. The bottom number here is a three, so I'm going to go up to three. And uh, I know if I look at the row here, that's a two, and so I can block that off there. Now, what I'm going to do is in this column right here, you say it's four, three, two, one. Well, here's two right here. I know in order for that to be true, this is to be the, the two, and then I know there's a one, and that blocks off the one on the bottom row. In this column, I know that one is going to be the last thing. Well, we've got a one right here, so I'm going to block that off right there. So I'm going to look at this row now is what's caught my eye, and I know that it's got a three that I have open right here, so that actually ends right there. Uh, and since that's a one, that blocks off the one. I can also infer that from this row. I can also infer that this is a one from this row, so I can go ahead and block that off. In this column that I have highlighted here, there's a two and a two. And so there's only one space here, so I know that's not it. And also I can tell from the row that you, there's no ones in here. What I will start doing at this point in this column just to see is I'm going to block off a two and a two. And I notice that if I do, uh, if I go from either side, I noticed that while there is this little overlap here, they're from different blocks. These, this, this block is actually from the second two, and this block is from the first two. So there is nothing I can infer from that. There's actually nothing I can do there right now. So what I will then do at this point is I will look to see what other uh, things that I can kind of hi highlight and say are both. So I'm actually going to look because I like big numbers. Uh, and I will look at this right here first, this row right here. So I'm going to go in and do a five and a two. And then in my head, I usually do this three, four, five. So there's actually nothing there I can do because they don't, nothing overlaps. The two and the five do not overlap each other. Let's try this row right here. So I'm going to assume one, the one is one in there and then one, and then one, two, three, four, five. And I can just tell you because I know five's on the left and there's the green lines that when I do it the other way, uh, even though I know this is in both, that doesn't mean that it, this is correct. What does matter is these three that are part of the five, I know those are correct. So I'm gonna, I sometimes leave these on and then they confuse me. I'm going to do the same down here, two, one, one. And so what I can notice here is that this two, this is part of the two right there. I know that. So I'm going to mark that. This one is probably not going to give me that. Nope. Because there's... Too many things. I know that the one, one, one is there, and then there's too much on the threes, too much space between threes there. So I know that this is if the two and the five don't overlap here, they don't overlap here as either. So then I'm going to kind of look at start looking at the columns. 
that I've got here, so I don't know if this is going to give me anything. So one, one, two, three, four. It actually does. So that's that's true right there because the fours overlap on that. And then I'm going to see what this gives me. So since I've got this one here, I know that there's a three there and there's three ones. So that is definitely a one. I don't know if it's the first one, the second one, or the third one. And you can tell because it's not grayed out on the side that the computer doesn't know either. But that gives us something. It also might help here, now that I've blocked this off, if I do one, 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 two, so you notice that I'm assuming that the one is going to be, the, the last one is going to be one of these two. And then I'm doing the one and the two. It could be like this. It could be like this, but that will always be set. And then that thing I was doing before of extending out, because the right number here that we've got left is a three, this is... It could be one, two, three, or one, two, three, but it's always going to be that. And now I know that's my one. And then I can go down here, one, two, three, four, because there's a four here. And it will either be this four or this four. So that gives me this, which I know from this row, it wants a four, so one, two, three, four. I know that's true. Now, this is, uh, this, and things are coming across like nicely here because what this now does is for this column that I'm looking at, it's 3, 2, 1, 3. We already have the 3. The 3 is going to be up here, but you notice the 2 cannot be up here. So I know that's the 2, that's the 1. And the 3 actually could be from either direction, but it will always have that. Now, with this, I don't know if this is from the 5 or the 2. I know it's not from the 1. So I can at least extend it out to the two. The two could be here, or it could be here. Because there's more than enough room to have all that happen. So I know that. Which means I can now take this column, because there's a five, and extend it down. So none of this is guesswork. I actually know all this is gonna all this is true. So uh, kind of going back down, checking my work here. So I have a one here because there was a two, one, one. So basically looking at this row, uh, since this is a two and a five and there's a one thing here, I know that's not tr gonna happen. And I know that this is a one, all these are ones. Any, any block I fill in on this row is a one, which means now I can actually finish this column because I have eliminated those two. And so now that column is finished right there. In this row that I have highlighted right now, one, two, three, four, because it wants a four. I know that's there, but now that these are connected, I know that it will not extend out to this point. And uh, we can also theoretically do the same with this column because it wants five, one, two, three, four, five. But now that we've got three here, that's not true. Th this doesn't help us right now, but this column that I just did actually does because it wants a two and a two, and we have two sets of three. So I know that's part of the second two, and that's part of the first two. I don't know what the other one is, but that's part of it. And then I also know now from this row, since it's a one, I know that's out, which leaves that's the only one that's left. And then since it's a two, I know that's the two, the second part of the two. This is blank. And then this is my five. I block that out right there. And then uh, this column has two at the top. So I'm putting that in. So I don't know anything more about these two columns yet but we're making good progress. So I know uh, this column actually com is completely done without me even realizing it, so I can just close it off there. Uh, and we don't know anything more about this column. This could be anything, because the five could be coming up from here with this being the one, or the one could be there, and the, the five could be coming up from there. Don't know anything more about that column right now. So now at this point, I start looking around to see if there's anything else I can infer from any of this. And one of the things that I kind of learned early on from this is this column right here. This is kind of sneaky. But if you play with the blue stuff on, the, the blue lines that show you, it will show you this is a blue line because there is actually something you can infer, even though it's a one, two, one, and there's way more than uh, six spaces. And uh, so you can't really infer things, but you know that the t first one is a one and the second one is a two, which means this square I have highlighted will always be off. It could mean that this is the one or it could be the two. We don't know, but we know for a fact it's not going to be that, which means now 
with this row that's very near to the top, I can now kind of play with this one and the five. So if I assume the one is there and the five is here, uh, you notice now we actually have something that overlaps because there's if the five is here, it goes from here. So we know that. I don't know where the one is. I don't know where any more of the fives are, but that's there. And then that also solves this first one up here. Uh, so I'm going back through on this, and I know since uh, we have this filled in and the top number here is a four, I know that is there. So I know that this goes out here. So looking at this row, it wants four. One, two, three. Well, it can't go here because then that would make a five, and we don't have that. So I know that I can cut off this here, and then that becomes the four, which makes it one of our ones in that column. And then, because this row is a five and there's a little one, a little thing here by itself, I know that's not true, which means that's our two, and that ends this column. I notice in this row, that's four, because it wants four in a row. So that ends this row and actually that column. So I can now look at this column right here, and I notice that since it wants five in the top, so one, two, three, four, five. So there's actually our one from this row. But also I know because the fives are here, this is the only place that the one in this column can be. And in this row, it wants five from there. So two, three, four, five. So now I've solved for the five. Looking at this column, there's three, and then it wants one. So I know that. And then I notice that I've blocked this off when dealing with these rows. So I know that the top is not anything because I've already got my one. And so all we have is a three left. So there's two. That's the middle of our two. So it can either be there or there. I don't know yet. Actually, I do. Uh, I actually do because this is a five right here. One, two, three, four, five. So I know that since that blocks that off and then this two, that's, that's this column is done. So from here in this column is five, and it could be either this or this, but we actually know what it is because the number it wants here, because we had three, one, one, is another one. So I know it's by itself, which then allows me to say that's the end of that column right there. Looking at this column, one, two, three, four, because it wants four at the top there. So we've kind of killed that out, and we can actually also finish this row because it wants five. And now this row is completely done. Before I go away from this area, I'm going to look at these columns. You notice how the first number is a two, and we've blocked off uh, the second column, second row here from these two columns. I know that the one is not either of those. I also know it's not that. Uh, let's see if we can figure out where it is. So I know that the top number here is a one, so that's not it, and that's not it. But we don't. it could be this. It could be that. Where could it be? Well, I'm going to look at this row right here where I've got one, one, four, and then ones. And there's a one. So I block that off. I've got that three up there. And that finishes the top row. So going back to this column right here, because it's four, three, two, one. Well, since there's a four spot here where this could be. So let's assume it starts from here. That's my three. Or it could start from the top. And that's my three. But in any case, that is always going to be put in. And on the row, that's a one. So it's off. Which now helps us on this column because there is no way that this can't be the two because if this is the one, then there is no place to put the two that's still available in this column. So I know that's my two. Don't know where the one is. It's one of these, but I don't know what it is yet. But in this row, that one that we just put down is the one from that this row wants. So I can cut off the ends of this and extend this out to the, the four so it can handle either direction. And we'll get back to that one later. Uh, but by doing that, this column we have completed. The three is there. And since on the row I see that it wants it's a one, I put that X there, which means there's only one spot here for the one in this column right above it. And then I look at the row and I see that's a one that's two things. That's a two block that it wants there. So I put that there, hit X, and move on. So in this column, the same thing that I was talking about earlier, uh, about the ones and the twos and how you can infer an X, uh, it actually can happen here because I don't really I don't really know if this is a two, uh, so I know that's not true because it's got to have a one or a two in order for this to be correct. But then I look at this and because the next block down is a two block, well this can't be two and this be two, 
So I actually know that is the one. How do I know that? Because even without this, if if I was if I did but if I didn't do this block here that I just talked about, let's assume so we know that's the first one. Let's assume that would be the first uh, the second one. This would be the first two. It wants another two, but I can't it doesn't fit. So in this sense, I actually know that the only way this works is if that's a two and that's a one. That's not guesswork, and that that's a little bit it's hard to wrap your mind around when you see it for the first time, but there's no guesswork involved. That is actually just doing the logical part of the puzzle. And then this column, actually, you can even just say that's got to be the two because the one's going to be either that or that. We don't know which one it's going to be. Yet. I go back up, check my work. This row, it's everything's a one at this point, so I can put the left, uh, the one there to the left. Same with this, and this one is a two right here. Now I'm going to look at this column. It's one, two, one, one, two, one. So let's say one, two, one, one, two, one. We actually have this column completely com completely done based on all the work we've done elsewhere. Uh, and then this bottom row wants a three, so I can actually extend this out three, and I know that it can't have any of these because there's only three things left. So it can either be there or there. Everything else is off at this point. And as I always do when I'm working on the edge, if I fill in an edge block, I look at the bottom or right or left or top number uh, in the column to see how far it goes up. That one's a one. Or th this one's a two, so I put the one there. And I know that this is, everything here is a one. I don't know which one it is. It could be the second or the third one, but it's one of the ones. So I can block it off on both sides. So now I look at these and I try to figure out where I can go next. So let's see here. First thing I want to do, actually, there's a one here. I can actually clear off some of these uh, rows here. So this one is there. So I clear that off. This row, it actually wants two. So this entire row is actually done. And then that would be a one right there. So now I can actually look at this and say, okay, well, one is at the top, then two. And then this could be either that or that but it can't be this one so that's actually off and then as i go across here the the left no most number here is a three it's off that's all the that's the three and i clear off the entire row now i'm going to look at this column right here just to see what what can happen so two let's assume two one three one right so if i come up the other direction I will see one, and I'll come up the other direction because it'll illustrate something here. So if I want one, the three actually can't be that. The three would have to be these because this is absolutely part of the three. And then I would say one, and I realize I can't do that because this can't be the two. The one cannot be here. Cause so coming in both directions... This absolutely has to be the one, and this absolutely has to be the two. And the reason is because I already had this here, which was a part of the three, and so that means this can't be part of the three. Now, this could still be a one here, or that could be a one. I actually don't know. I can't infer anything else about this column, but I have finished up all, all those. So since I've blocked off everything above this in the column, I know that this is going to be the first one. That's going to be your first one. And then you've got a two and a three. So since this is here, I know that that can't be true because you can't have a two up here because then it would overlap. And then I'll actually look two, three. I can actually now finish this entire column. That column's done. This bottom row right here, that's a one. Don't know if it's the first, second or th uh, first or second one. But I know this one, since there's a two, I know that's off because this two cannot extend out here. And if you look in this far right, far left row, it wants a two. Well, there's one here. So that is definitely off. So now we know that's the first, the second, and the third. So this one is set. I block that off, which now says this bottom row, it's a three. Looking at this column, because there's uh, it only wants three left, so that can either be here or it can be here because this is already set. It can never be there. So now I know because the bottom row here is a two, there's that. So I've, I've cleared off that. I can block it off there. The second number it wants is a one. 
And so we already have a one here. So I actually know that's got to be the one because it can't be this and it can't be that. So I block that off. And then actually I can put the two there because I know that's all that's left. And since these are ones in this row, I block those off. There's only one block left in this row and it's supposed to be a one. So that's there. And I look in this column, that's your three. So I shut that down and I end all that, which also clears this row, complete row right here because we've completed it. The two, this is uh, this column wants two right there. And this call, uh, this row is done. We only have a two left and we have now cleared and gotten our flowers, the moth orchids, which really are the most annoying puzzles in the Picross game. They're all the are all the flower ones, and they start throwing them at you a whole lot. But uh, that's how I completed uh, that last puzzle without any guesswork whatsoever, just using all logic and just looking around. And like I said, if I wasn't narrating it, it'd take me about 10 minutes. It took me about 25 minutes to do it this time. But uh, let me know in the comments or on Twitter if you have any questions. Uh, and thanks for watching.